I'm Pete Vermillier for Litchfield.bz and HiddenInPlainSightBlog.com. We're here on a cold November morning. The temperatures are in the 30s, so we'd like to think about summer. And for many Columbia University students 100 years ago, summer meant coming to Camp Columbia in Morris. So we're at the entrance of what's now Camp Columbia State Park along Route 109 in Morris. For nearly 100 years, from 1885 to, eight, to 1983, Columbia University held engineering courses here on a 500-acre campus that stretched from the shores of Bantam Lake all the way down to the Morris-Bethlehem town line. Not much remains of the facility, but we're going to take a walk around and see what we can find. Looking here at the remains of the flag circle, this was the heart of the campus out here at Camp Columbia. Columbia University began to seriously buy land in this area in 1903. And where we're standing now was once the farm of Mrs. Evelyn Waugh. And it was around her farm that uh, Columbia added acres and acres to, uh, to build the facility here. And once they possessed the land that they wanted, the university came in here and built dormitories. They, there was a YMCA building with uh, pool tables and ping pong tables. There was a mess hall. There was even an astronomical observatory here. Now in the years prior to World War I, the university built a boathouse down on Bantam Lake and really had plans for a much more expansion of the facility. But that expansion was brought to a halt by the coming of the war. In 1917, uh, officers uh, training for the United States Army, um, they came here to Camp Columbia and set up uh, a training program uh, at first for Columbia University students and, and then for the public at large uh, as part of a readiness program for, uh, for World War I. So in the woods in the distance, uh, trenches were dug. That's out looking toward Munger Lane, down heading toward Bethlehem. And uh, mock infantry assaults swept the camp here. Now this program was, not conduct was conducted by the university, not by the army. Uh, but the, the Army put out a statement that said that it had the approval and endorsement of the Secretary of War and, quote, the record of the men who attended last summer shows that the course has been effective in preparing men for officer's rank, real usefulness, and rapid advancement. This is the main driveway, uh, the main entranceway to Camp Columbia, and, and this goes straight down to 202, 209, 109. This comes out at the intersection of those two roads right down on Bantam Lake. Looking down at the uh, old roadbed of the old Woodbury Road, so this road would have uh, come off of 109 uh, in, in Morris and follow this route down to Woodbury and as the camp grew and grew and uh, purchased the area both to the right side of the road and the left side of the road this road was closed uh, as a public road in 1926. Well this is the centerpiece of the campus out here at Columbia at Camp Columbia. In 1934 a fieldstone dining hall was built and then in 1942 this 60 foot uh, observation tower that doubled as a cylindrical water tower was built of local stone by engineering students out here uh, paid for by the Columbia University class of 1906 and to the southeast of the tower were the athletic fields. Columbia University engineering students blasted and leveled the hilly tilly uh, Morris terrain out here to create a softball field and a football field. In the late 1940s, the Columbia University Lions football team held their preseason practices here under coach Lou Little, who paced the sidelines at the school for 26 seasons and was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 1960. Dwight D. Eisenhower, who served as president of Columbia University after returning from World War II in the late 1940s, is, report, is reported to have spent time out here at the camp watching the football practices and hunting on the grounds. For all the uh, sports fields and YMCA buildings, the purpose of the, of the camp out here was to educate students about engineering, engineering practices, and the building that we're looking at here was the chemical storage lab and the chemist, uh, chemical storage facility and the chemistry lab. And uh, these were mandatory courses 
out here. Uh, in addition to that, uh, students took civil engineering, uh, technology, and they had an interesting program in international affairs. Columbia University had a language center out here, and they offered uh, classes in English to uh, students coming from foreign countries to study at Columbia. In 1952, there were 60 international students who spent the summer out here. They came from places like Korea and China and Japan, Norway, Sweden, Colombia. And that allowed the university to declare that the camp was, quote, a veritable United Nations in microcosm. The youngsters lived together and worked together with no more friction than one would find in any other college class. Back at the water tower, and as you can see today, it's all barred up and uh, completely closed to access, which uh, is a sign that by the 1960s, declining student interest and changes to the engineering curriculum at Columbia led, uh, led the university to close down the engineering school out here. The university continued to use it for special programming until 1983 when they shut it down completely and they began to look for a buyer. By 1989, the town of Morris had to come in here and declare several buildings to be a public hazard and they utilized a control burning um, to, to demolish those buildings and remove the, the threat to the public safety. In 2000, the state of Connecticut agreed to purchase the grounds for $2.1 million and they began to remove most of those buildings. Today only this tower, the uh, chemistry lab that we were just looking at, and the boathouse down on the shores of Bantam Lake uh, still stand. For Litchfield.bz and HiddenInPlainSightBlog.com, I'm Pete Vermillier.